Okay, so we're here in a Windsor corner store, a convenience store, with members of the Most Serene Republic. And uh, I'll just let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Ryan. And I'm Adrian. <laughs> Obviously, you guys are at a point in your career where things are probably getting a little bit easier for you uh, in the country, or is that is that a myth? Can you? I think it just looks like that. We're still doing the punk rock thing, sleeping on people's floors and stuff like that. But uh, it's nice. The government helps. Vote liberal, by the way. Are you on a P2 uh, visa for touring in the States? Or? Yeah. Well, you sort of have to be. So how does that, um, I don't know, influence your decisions on where to tour? It doesn't. That may influence the people who do the tour planning. Right. <laughs> I just get in the van. <laughs> Let's get in the van. Oh, we're, here's a here's a space for us to set up now. Here you go. Yeah. Time to unpack. Time to load up. I don't know. Everything in our band is very compartmentalized. There's seven or so of us. So, uh, so everything's pretty compartmentalized, and you only get fed what you need to be fed. How about sleeping arrangements, like in the van or wherever you're crashing? Uh, we usually do it according to which. Uh, physical ailments that person has. You know, it all depends on who drove the most and uh, all that other um, boring stuff. Also, that if you're a knee sleeper, sleep. that sucks. Ready? Like this, you're trying Ready? to sleep and it's like full knee. <laughs> and, and the guy's just asleep Man, and you're going, are you serious? Knee. This you're guy's full kneeing knee. knee. me. This guy's, this guy's I don't want to be, like you sleep like this when you're in a this double. Knee. You sleep like this in a double, not full knee. Are there any stories that stick out? Just frequent all the time stories that pile up, that get so much that they have to be triggered in order for them to volunteer memory, in order for them to, mm. uh, mm -hmm. to actually yeah, there's no, there's no involuntary memory triggering with these memories. These are just remember when. Because it is just so many. I, I could name one right now. Mm. I, I could, but I don't really want to. <laughs> and what about, do uh, you, you guys still have day jobs? I just uh, quit mine to pursue harnessing the energy that we need. How do you feel about um, like losing creative time like while you're on the road? And cause, Actually, cause I you don't guys know. We just finished the new, quite a bit. the new record, and I have no no idea how we did it. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, actually, when you think about the time that you spend on the, the work that you make. Um, somehow, it, uh... Did you get it? This is Mahogany Frog. This is our sauna. Five or six times. We've gone east more than west. It's uphill going out west. Uphill harder on the engine. Could we make millions of dollars? It's, it's odd. Every tour we've done, except for the last tour to Calgary, we've come home with more money than we left with. Man, press your record before you go on tour. Because it might be the only money you make from the show, is selling your five CDs or whatever to you know, those people that really liked you. And that might be your like, food money or whatever for the, for the tour, because you might not get paid from, your, from your, you know, your show. I don't see it as a sacrifice at all. Like, uh, I've n got done nothing but gain experiences. I don't even care about the girlfriends I've lost from playing with this band. <laughs> he doesn't there even care about those girls. Well, yeah. You know, I've always wanted to, like, hold a job and go to school, actually. Like, travel in the summertime. Save up some money and travel. But you can't do any of that when you're in a rock and roll band. You went to fucking Mexico. <laughs> you frog. Yeah, but it would be nice to, like... Do it for a little bit longer. <laughs> I have a baby and a wife. I guess that's my sacrifice. I, I deeply miss my family when I'm when we go. This is what this is what we do. This is what I do. This is what I love doing. And the fact that I have a family at home and then I have a, like a band on the road. It's like it's like it's the perfect the perfect life. The perfect life. Right here. Mahogany frog. like we have been left in the lurch by a friend who maybe didn't go like as far as he could have like I hate to say this before like he's even been diagnosed with what he may or may not have but when I put myself in that position or Dan in that position or John in that position I just can't see any of us not like holding on to like the last possible second not mm -hmm. the last possible convenient second great so. but how do you think that's gonna change the dynamic of the band when you guys get home oh, boy. we're gonna have to have a chat about that <laughs> I guess it depends how, maybe for me anyway, how serious the 
his health issues mm. are. I, and also just, it would be, I think it'd be worthwhile to see where his commitment level's at. You know? Got a bit of vocals in We need no reverb. This is a very stripped down version of a song called Can't See Straight. Usually I loop it though, so I don't have to sing and play at the same time. Why can't I speak to you? I wanna come home. I wanna My name's Dan Werb. I'm from a band called Woodhands. I also play in a band called Henri Fabergé and the Adorables. We've done the night drive thing. Like we we played in Kelowna. Uh, last November and it was like icy and shitty and horrible. We like bailed <laughs> right after the show and then went down the Coquihalla at like four in the morning and it was so icy and we had just heard from our friends the Golden Dogs that they had almost died like three days earlier driving the Coquihalla. So is it worth it to tour independently in, in Canada? You're like, you're like, uh, you're like a maverick that. with that <laughs> mic, man. I, uh, man, is it worth it? Well. Like economically, no, obviously not. So Woodhands is a two-piece. So that's amazing. So when we tour, no problems, right? We 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 both get couches, um, or if we're lucky, someone's bed. But with the adorables, it's always a shit show, man. It's always like there's like eight to like ten of us. This last time it was all right. I slept on the ground a lot. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm a martyr. I'm not gonna go there. We were rolling with couples. That's the thing. There were two couples in the band. And when you got couples, man, the couples always get the beds. Do they ever do any sort of like swapping around between couples? That did happen. That did happen. There were romps in adjacent rooms. And there was like, they're like, oh no, no, like you can totally come join us in the bed. It's like, actually, I think I'm better like on this concrete floor. Have you ever written any songs on the road? No. But I do think that distance is really important to write songs. Like when I, I, I used to live uh, in Europe and when I was like separated from my girlfriend at the time, I wrote a bunch of awesome songs. Sort of heartful love songs like the one that you just played for us over there? No, they were more like uh, like from down here, from right there. But with, with oh, oh, with that here too. And a little piece of that. Ottawa, outside Zaphods, and I'm um, here with the Winks. Um, to begin with, how long have you been out on the road? This is our first date of our tour. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We just bought a van and it doesn't have headlights, so... <laughs> no, no, it has headlights now. We fixed it. We okay, what about uh, biggest sacrifice that you have to make of your, your life back home when you go on the road? I had to um, get a substitute cello teacher for my students, so, yeah, I had to say goodbye to all my cello students that were working so hard, but at least, at least there's somebody else who's going to whip them into shape for me while I'm gone. <laughs> all my jobs are pretty flexible, so, like, teaching, playing in orchestra, and, like, nannying it's all things you can just be like i'll be back in two months whatever yeah. and then todd just his job is booking tours so yeah i just beg my parents for money <laughs> yeah. it's like please <laughs> yeah. i was like i this tour is gonna be really good it's gonna be really good uh can i have some more money yeah. and like i just have to like tell them how good things are and then yeah. i'm like yeah so uh yeah um money Dave just phoned and oh, wow. and said he's, he's and wanted to like join us for the last leg of the tour because he says he's feeling better. He's willing to spend like five hundred dollars on a plane ticket? I don't know, man. But at this point, it's like four hundred dollars for such an artist. One way even four hundred dollars probably. 
what do you figure? Uh, I think I've got to write him the email that says everything that we need to say. What, we, what, what, what would you? I'm not. I don't want. Ado's done all this work, and now Ado can just like step aside. Yeah, no, there's no bad. way. No. Ado is Ado is finishing the tour. Yeah. He kind of let us down and screwed us over for a whole two weeks, you know. I don't know, man. You know what I think, and I'm just new at this, so I feel like I have uh, less to say about it. Look at that scenery. Peace out, scenery. Peace out. <laughs>